In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. In your minds, you must be the same as Christ Jesus. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and at every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord You are my praise, O Lord, in the great assembly. My vows I will pay before those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live forever and ever. You are my praise, O Lord, in the great assembly. All the earth shall remember and return to the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's. He is ruler of the nations. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. You are my praise, O Lord, in the great assembly. And my soul shall live for him, My children serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare his faithfulness to peoples yet unborn. These things the Lord has done. You are my praise, O Lord, in the great assembly. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One of those gathered round the table said to Jesus, Happy the man who will be at the feast in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, There was a man who gave a great banquet, and he invited a large number of people. When the time for the banquet came, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come along, everything is ready now. But all alike started to make excuses. The first said, I have bought a piece of land and must go and see it. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and am on my way to thry them out. Please accept my apologies. Yet another said, I have just got married and so am unable to come. The servant returned and reported this to his master. Then the householder, in a rage, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in here the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. 
Sir, said the servant, your orders have been carried out, and there is still room. Then the master said to his servant, Go to the open road and the hedgerows, and force people to come into. Make sure my house is full, because I tell you, not one of those who were invited shall have a taste of my banquet. The Gospel of the Lord Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the first reading, Paul describes kenosis, the self-emptying of Christ, who though divine, humbled himself by taking the form of a servant and sacrificing himself on the cross. For us Franciscans, kenosis is a life experience of total dependence on God. St. Francis of Assisi embodied this in his life by renouncing material wealth and social status to live in humility, poverty, and service to the poor, and in extents beyond religious life, challenging all people, regardless of their vocation, to live counter-culturally. By resisting self-promotion and prioritizing the well-being of others, we can reflect Christ's self-emptying through love, service, and humility, creating communities of generosity and kindness. Through small acts of self-giving, we participate in Christ's redemptive work, bringing God's love into the everyday realities of life. Today's Gospel reading brings another layer to this theme. Jesus tells the parable of the great banquet, where those who were invited made excuses rejecting the invitation. The host, in his generosity, opens the door wide, inviting the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Those often forgotten by society, this banquet is an image of the kingdom of God where everyone is welcomed, but it also highlights the many excuses we make when God calls us. How often do we make excuses? I'm too busy, I have other priorities, or I'll respond to God later. Yet God's invitation to his kingdom is urgent and all-encompassing. The refusal to attend the banquet symbolizes the ways we reject God's call by placing worldly concern above our relationship with him. But God's mercy is abundant. He continues to extend the invitation to anyone who will listen. The challenge for us today is twofold, to humble ourselves like Christ and to say yes to God's invitation and avoiding the distractions of life that can pull us away from the kingdom. So dear brothers and sisters, how can we empty ourselves, as Christ did, to be more open to God's call? What excuses are we making today that keep us from fully embracing God's invitation to his banquet? At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, as thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that, renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.